What's good, YouTube, and welcome back to another goddamn banger, all right? So, in today's YouTube video, we are going to making things a bit differently. I am going to be showing you guys how I make my own thumbnails uh, for my YouTube videos. And I'm going to show you how to add, like, different assets, make them glow, make them bright, make them pop, you know? Uh, we're going to make them crisp, all right? So, without further ado, let's not waste any more time and let's get straight into this tutorial, all right? All right, so... We are in Photoshop, and the first thing you want to do is you want to have a screenshot of your gun ready. Um, you do want a nice background. Um, but yeah, we get to that later. So the first thing you want to do is you want to cut out the gun. You want a nice and clean cutout of the whole gun. And um, yeah, basically that's the first part. So the most important tool in Photoshop, I think, in my opinion, is the pen tool. So you basically press P and brings out the pen tool. And on the left side, you can see it's right over here, the pen tool, right? What that does, it kind of makes selections and yeah, that's basically what you need to know for it. You just kind of connect the dots and basically you want to start on the outside. Yeah, that's what I do. Connect it to the first place right here. And you just want to like follow the path along whatever you're trying to cut out. Okay, so a quick tips that I can give you is whenever you want to curve it, like some curved areas, which are not, you know, obviously straightforward, you can just click and drag whatever di direction you want. You kind of can make whatever, you know, whatever selection you want to make, right? So just do that. Just form it the way you want to form it. And after you're done, press alt and click in the middle. That kind of removes that other handle, which is going to make things difficult for you if you don't. So, yeah, just kind of follow the whole path. And whenever I need to stop, I'm, I'm basically going to speed this video up to make it not so freaking boring, I guess. But whenever we get to an important part, which I need to explain something for you, I will. So, yeah, so I'm just going to speed this up really quickly. And, yeah, I'll catch you guys soon in a minute. All right, so I just wanted to pause right there real quickly and uh, tell you guys that we are almost finished with the cutout. And uh, as you can see right here, the cutout kind of continues into the hand, into this area right here, right? So you don't want to make sure that everywhere where there is a crack, like where you can enter and exit, uh, you want to basically just continue through there and make the selection so you don't miss it. Normally you don't have, but in this case I do have with this gun and uh, yeah, just want to do that real quick. Yeah, now we're kind of finishing up and um, you can just basically click anywhere you would like on the outside. It doesn't really matter. But now comes another important part before we kind of cut, it, cut out the gun and it's, you know, areas where the backgrounds will show where you cannot, you know, have where you basically don't have an exit and an entrance into the gun whatever so in this case it's uh, right here by the trigger and also right here by the sight so what you want to do is you can just basically just start by making another selection right here or i guess another dot just continue on just like you did before it will not ruin anything else you did before the only important thing is that you cut it out correctly and it will just connect um uh, that's the first part for the first area, I guess. Do the same thing right here. Kind of hard to see when it's a blue background, <laughs> not gonna lie. There you go, that's that. And um, yeah, this is important because when you actually cut it out and you don't make the selection in these types of areas, it will look really nasty and it will make the background show in a different background which you will be using later on and that will not be very pleasant in my opinion i mean you can't always skip it if you feel like you don't have any time 
but in my honest and humble humble opinion i would just like take this advice and just you know cut all the parts that are needed just like that doesn't even take long either so now we are pretty much finished with the pen tool i guess pen tool is one of the most important tools that you have in your disposal on photoshop because you can really do a lot of with the pen tool so basically when you have your cutout right here you want to press Control enter and that will make a selection and what that means is everything that's within these borders selections i guess uh you can basically do whatever you want you can you know add a solid color within these you can just delete the whole thing yeah you, but wh what we want to do is we want to cut it out so after you press Control enter you want to press Control j right so we want to hide the layer and now you see we have our cut out, cut out uh cut out i guess <laughs> uh so and also i forgot to mention um if you think that your cutout isn't really great you feel like there's a lot of things showing out you can always just control z and it will back uh whatever you did so like if i show you right now i do this boom i look at the background and i see there's a lot of background showing uh i mean i look at the gun and there's a lot of background showing you can just control z control z it will go back to the whatever you, your thing was for the cutout and you can just select type right here no no, no, no not type select modify contract what this will do is you can basically just contract it by any type of pixels that you want normally one uh one or two pixels is really enough uh but um yeah just know that you can do that and uh it will kind of affect the borders right here and it will contract them make them make them go into the gun wheel a bit more so you uh, excuse me so you don't see any background stuff but yeah i'm kind of good with what i've done right here so i'm just gonna cut it out boom there we have it we're gonna delete the original background because we don't need it Bop. we're gonna add a black background but i'll show you why in just a second so you add another layer, put it below right here. Um, take the color black, control backspace. Boom, there you have. Don't don't mind the borders outside right here. Uh, doesn't really matter too much because we want to focus on the gun. So what the black uh, background is going to do is going to show you everything that you've missed in the cutout. See like right here, I missed a spot and I don't really mind that much doesn't make a huge difference but we will see if you probably miss like a bigger spot or something with the black background so that's good to know and also it helps with the next step with that we're gonna do so basically you want to select the gun uh, you go to filter you go to camera filter and here's where kind of a lot of the magic happens right you want to press this square down here what's gonna what it's gonna do is there is uh, tell you the before and the after picture so the left one is the before and the right one is the after so basically you can just zoom it in as you normally would hold space and move around your mouse and you will be able to move around uh, hold z and alt and you will be able to zoom in and out so i kind of like to zoom it out a bit have it in center so i can see the gun clearly and okay so what i usually start off with is the texture right here on this on the side so i want the texture all the way up see it already makes the gun stand out a bit more in my opinion you want the clarity all the way up uh, sometimes you don't kind of want to you don't want to overdo it because sometimes it just will make the gun look disordered or whatever you're trying to do it just makes it look really looks really bad so you just have to like test it out right now we can put it all on 100 100 and dehaze i don't really touch it because it only just you know makes the gun look worse so dehaze on zero we have another uh thing right here where we can you know mess with the details which is basically the same as you know 
texture and clarity just gives more you know makes the gun look look a bit better stand out a bit more i just had to go do something real quick but i'm back now and uh you know far off where i left so yeah you want sharpening on 100 you want noise reduction on zero honestly uh you can't put it on 10 just to reduce a bit of noise but it does it just makes the gun a bit smoother but not very smooth to the point where it looks like the original cutout so sharpening you don't always want to sharpen it to 150 percent i guess the max uh, because sometimes it makes depends on the gun if the gun is sharpable i guess <laughs> you can just max it all the way out you'll notice when it looks disordered and bad but at this point it looks good so color noise reduction i'll leave it as is as well because it just kind of makes the gun bland and it doesn't really make a huge different difference in our case so now you can move on to the basics which is basically exposure i'm gonna add a bit of exposure make it you know 0.25 so bear in mind these are very sensitive all of these uh all of these um settings right here are sensitive uh so you do want to make sure you don't overdo them right it's not like the texture and clarity ones because i can just show you real quick if i were to do a exposure up to halfway up it would just look really bad and we don't want that much light on it so 0.25 is really good on that one contrast you can do you can just test them out as you go as well like I have nothing set in my mind. I have not planned this video. I do not I do not plan any thumbnail that I make. I just kind of go like by what I kind of find good looking uh, at the moment. So that's what I'm doing right now. So you can just basically test them out if you don't know. I kind of already know what all of these do. But this one, you know, contrast, you can just kind of put it on 10, I guess. Highlights, you want a lot of highlights. So, uh... I would honestly say highlights at a hundred or nah, like I'll say 65. It brings out the whites a bit more shadows you can mess with the shadows a bit. Honestly, we can have it on like 20, just make like the blacks stand out a bit more. Um, what else? The whites you want the whites to stand out a bit more as well. Uh, Putting this on 100 really doesn't make a huge of a difference. It just makes it look better. The blacks we can leave as is. We can have it on 25. Just to bring it out a bit more. Make, make you know, the render look a bit better. Just like that. Boom. I think we're kind of done. Uh, we have one more last thing in the camera raw filter. And that's the color mixer. You want to go over to luminance. And we want to go over to the blues because mostly the gun is blue, obviously. Uh, purple as well, a bit. But go to the blues and you want to bring out that color a bit more. Uh, I would say probably at about 40. That's perfect. So you go over to saturation and you make it even more intense. Probably like a bit. It already looks good in my opinion. So 10 looks perfect. So we're done with the camera filter right here. You can see like the difference it made already looks a lot better in my opinion. Not going to lie. So now we're going to move on to the background. I will just pull it up really quickly. So you can just basically search for the background online. All right. So I just copied the picture that I found online and I'm just going to copy and paste it basically. Boom. There we have it. We don't need the black background anymore, so we can just delete it. Take this picture right here, the background. I'll make sure it lines up with the canvas. Obviously. Boom. Right now you're probably thinking, uh, this looks really bad, right? The background is off. Everything is off center. It's blurred out. But trust me, like trust the process. I'm going to make this look really good. All right. So first thing you want to do, take the gun, control T. Make it bigger, make it stand out more, tilt it a bit, hide the hand. You want to show most of the gun, uh, bit like this, I'm guessing 
right? So a neat, neat little tricks. So a neat little trick that I can show you um, is that uh, hover over the Photoshop logo right down here, and you can basically see what it would kind of look like in a thumbnail, right? So that's what I do like every now and then just to see like how it fits into the canvas and how it would kind of look. Because remember, in a thumbnail, it's gonna be really small, like everything. You, you're just kind of you want to overdo whatever you do. So don't be afraid to like add more color or to saturate it or, you know, whatever you think is enough is, you know, you, ne you need a bit more. <laughs> just don't overdo it too much because that will kind of get noticed. But uh, other than that, you will be fine. So the next step I would say is fix the gun. All right. Don't care. Like, don't. Uh, hesitate on the background the background is also like almost just Im as important as the gun to fix but um we'll get to that part in just a sec but we want to focus on the gun right now so we have our render right here our gun render what you want to do is you want to add some color you want to add some light so we're going to start with our brush tool and add some you know make it more popping i guess so you, what you want to do is go down here add a new layer have that layer on top of the gun layer you want to press B which brings out the brush tool right here and you want to have the hardness on zero every time you use the brush on the lighting of the gun light lighting I guess yeah um, press alt and bring out any color inside of the gun that you want highlighted I would probably go with white in the beginning just to kind of you know make it look really good so just bring out the white in all the areas that you think it will suit the gun uh, you know just all of these make a stripe right here maybe make a stripe right here right so right now it looks really bad that's not what we're gonna stick with right so you want to go to the blend mode options and you want to put it on blend mode I guess whatever fits it really whatever makes it look better um, I would normally I use I usually go for linear dodge add uh, but in this case kind of just makes it look really bright and we don't really want that right now so I would go with overlay and just like totally looks a lot better right now so I would probably just stick like with white again not gonna lie do this maybe make it a bit more a bit more bluish type of color you know just to make kind of fit in a bit more just like that you want some color right here some right here some right there see how that looks overlay maybe we can do in your dodge add and we can lower the opacity to about 60 right we can even do 40 so we don't make it look like shit so 40 that's perfect that's enough just like that what more do we want we want we can add some adjustments to it adjustment layers um i would probably go with we can go with brightness and contrast to start off with and we want to make we want to make sure we make this into a clipping mask so it doesn't affect anything else only the layer that we selected so create a clipping mask over the like uh, the layer that we have or that we want to modify so and then you just mess around with the brightness right so kind of want to kind of want a really bright gun because the thumbnail is going to look better in a smaller version like that so I don't know what you think like 60 I think 60 is good uh, 55 155 you can mess with the contrast as well that honestly looks really good contrast at 100 all right boom we got that one done out of the way we can mess with curves as well uh, make into a clipping mask again usually I go on the right side I go down 
on the left side, I always go up. This will kind of make it, you know, give it even a better pop, but also bring out the colors of the gun. Just don't overdo it with the curves because the curves tend to be a bit more, uh, what's it called, uh, more sensitive. So sometimes you kind of get lost, so you just have to like delete the whole the layer and just do it over again. But you can basically add more points to it, right? See? You can just make them all, whatever you want. But I would just stick with the two points that are already and just go with them. Uh, what you want to do next is you have the background, right? Background is all plain. It's just a stock image off the internet and we want to make it look good, like really good. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is the image is already blurred out a bit and we want to make it even more blurrier. Uh, so what you want to do is select layer, obviously, go to filter. You go to blur radial blur there's a ton of like you can play around with all of these honestly if you want to make it look like you're moving around you can do gaussian blur if you just want to blur the whole image you can just blur it i guess the smart blur uh boom right there you can but honestly i'm gonna go with uh for this type i really like uh radial blur Ra what what this does is it makes the gun look like it's being sucked in like uh, I'm gonna show you so you have the amount up here I will go with 15 because that kind of fits my style and what I like uh, boom just like that kind of makes the whole gun you know the whole background kind of looks better right now uh, what you can do with the background even further is you can take an adjustment layer brightness and contrast have it on top of this layer obviously which it is right now so it only affects this layer uh, what you want to do is you want to make it a bit darker so see what i'm getting here when you make it a bit darker it kind of looks better in itself and it also makes the gun that's in focus stand out even more so that's like a quick like another tip uh which i can give you whereas if you want to make something a bit more glowier, make something glow, uh, you can always just like lower the brightness of the background and anything else around it to make it pop. So that's a quick tip for you. And uh, we can mess with the contrast as well. Contrast even makes it so that it kind of fits in even more. There we go. Honestly, this high up 90, I will go with 90. Uh, looks really good solid uh, what else can we do we can also take the gun as is we can uh, group them up everything that I have right here everything is for the gun so press the gun layer control no I mean shift and press click on the last layer that will just select everything in between now what you do next is control G boom. Now you basically have the whole, whatever you added on there, you can just, you know, play around with it as where if you were to just move around the gun, all the layers wouldn't follow. It would just look weird. Trust me. So you want to just do a group and now you can add a filter. Second, so you have to make it into a smart object. So what you want to do is, uh, before you make it into a smart object, this is always, you always want to do this. Basically, whenever you want to make like a big change, take it all control J and you have a copy, right? Uh, take the original one, disable that one. So you can only see the copy and you want to experiment on the copy. So if it doesn't go as planned, you can just delete it and you have the original one down there as well. So you want to make this into a smart object really quickly. Where the hell is it? Convert into a smart object. There we go. Uh, okay. Uh, kind of got confused there for a bit. Kind of look weird. But yeah, we're good. So make this into a smart object. And then you want to filter. 
you want to sharpen smart sharpen and that is gonna make it look a bit sharper i guess makes the gun pop a bit more radius you can play around with the radius usually i keep it like at one or 1.5 you can try two see how it goes if you do like 40 it would just look really weird see uh <laughs> obviously you don't want to do 40. i think two is really good a uh, good starting point point and speak all right <laughs> okay on that one uh what else do you want you want to double click on the layer drop shadow you want to add a small little drop shadow it does a lot to the image trust me just like a small shadow uh one to add you want to have the spread on zero uh if you don't it's just gonna look weird spread on zero distance on zero angle on zero the only thing you want to mess around with is the size okay so you have the size right here you want to have it on about 40 45 50 ish whatever you feel you know that you like this is all personal remember that so whatever you feel like you want to do you can do so i'm gonna leave mine on 55 right and uh yeah at this point you're like almost finished uh got a few assets out right here uh so i don't have to take much more of your time so i have like the red tags you have the warzone logo i'm gonna show you i already have like this group right here that i've made um and it's really easy to make one. I can make a, another tutorial where how you make like assets and red tags and stuff like that. It's not really complicated. You just make like two squares, make the one in the middle red, and then you just have a text and just kind of edit it real quick. Add some shadows and stuff. Really easy. Not 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 too complicated. Uh, so I'm just gonna grab this whole group right here. Control C. Add it right into my other image. Boom. Control T. Move it around. Uh, kind of tilted make it look good right right here uh take the gun oh shit all right uh move it a bit over here but honestly just keep it where it was just like that boom take my group that i have right here uh you want to have it under the gun so it kind of looks better you know we want to have the gun in focus once again you take the group uh, obviously i can edit my own text right here so i'll change that from demon to i don't know like poly atomic no nah, that's too long that's too long uh i don't know like crazy i guess you can have a crazy you can you can just add whatever you want honestly you do that uh take take the text Control t make it a bit bigger to make it fit into the actual tag that looks kind of good boom you have the whole tag right you tilt it kind of make it a bit bigger if you want to you can leave it as is you can tilt it like this you can have it down here it doesn't really matter that much uh the most important thing that does matter is the way you kind of apply the effects on it which makes it looks better makes it look better i guess so what you want to do is Control t right click and then oh shit one you have to like first make it into a smart object uh i think you can't rasterize no you cannot uh make it into a smart object that means you lose everything the assets has to give in the group once again i forgot to copy it but uh it doesn't matter really uh if you feel like you want to adjust it further you just copy the previous layer and just make another group like we did before so you have that asset out of the way uh but now what you want to do is basically yeah control t right click go to perspective this is what makes you kind of tilt it in other ways and uh i'm gonna show you you can just 
you move down it tells upward move up it tells like that right you kind of want to have it down like there boom control t again so you can tilt it another time perspective now you want to tilt it upward like this right but there we go uh, so now it kind of already looks a bit better so what you want to do next is you can also add a drop shadow to this whole thing make it fit in uh, add a drop shadow keep it on 55 the same as the gun render that we did just like that boom you have that out of the way you can even add some you know add some use a brush tool Oh shit, no, I want I want a whole white. Oh my what am I doing? Alright, there we go. Uh rest uh rest right. Create a clipping mask. So it only affects uh this tag. It doesn't affect the outside. So like if I were to click, I'm like clicking right now, it's not doing shit. Um uh, it only affects the tag. You have the crazy tag right there, you have some lights. In between uh, makes it look like a bit better you can change the blend mode to linear dodge add you know you can change the opacity you have the slider right here you know I kind of like that it kind of looks I'll have it on uh, 85 I'll have it on 85 that looks really good so yeah we have that asset out of the way you can add like the warzone logo as well I have one right here off of the internet that I took so what you want to do is take the object selection tool and basically select everything that's in the middle right here and what, it, what it's gonna do is gonna select everything that's like a text I guess hopefully it did it correct wait one second let's do this select without the black background I think it will be better oh my god it's supposed to select everything okay so what you can do is control J all right boom so you have you know the warzone logo right here right that's what we want that's what we need take that control C copy it paste it right on top of our thumbnail bomb just like that let's give you deep bop Wow. All right, so um, got this right here. And you can make a ton of adjustments to this one as well. You can uh, normally I would just go without any tags at all, but I'm just trying to show you what you can do, right? So you have this right here. You can. Uh, hmm, what do we want to do? First of all, we want we don't want the green part to show, right? We want the purple part on the logo right so kind of fits in to the thumbnail even better so what you want to do is select the layer obviously this is the layer I have it selected press Control u and you can change the hue of it you can make it whatever color you want in this case obviously we're going with pink color saturation you can make it a bit brighter there we go. That's kind of good enough. Uh, you don't have to mess with this one. You can if you want to. I'm probably going to leave it at 30. Not going to lie. Now that, I, now that I look at it. Boom. You do. Double click it. And go to drop shadow. I'm going to show you how to make it look good. Have like all the borders and stuff. Uh, So. Yeah. What you want to do now is. Have the spread on 100 tone down on the size just like this uh, see what kind of fits you don't want to overdo this too much make it black boom there we go you want to take this you want to i'm just going to tilt it real quick because it's not lined up all right there we go uh, you want to make this into a smart object because what we are going to do is we're going to add another drop shadow and you cannot add another drop shadow on top of this one 
if you do not make it into a smart object see so like i can add a different drop shadow but it would just add on top of the black one that's already there so we don't want that so what you want to do to make it happen is you make this into a smart object convert to a smart object you double click it and you add another drop shadow and that will stack on top of it and that's what we want uh so now the second drop shadow we're gonna make white or we can actually just make it whatever color our gun is to make it fit even more or actually this color right here see that already looks even better so you take that you put it on a distance one second actually i'm gonna cancel that out real quick and i'm gonna make an adjustment to it so you do Control t uh you want to do whatever we did before perspective you want to make it go oh oh my god what is going on right there you want to have it go why is it doing that Uh, I don't want to like overdo it. This is annoying. Second, Control T, perspective. Nope, other side. Just like that. Enter. I'm gonna do Control T, perspective. Make it tilt like this. Boom. Control T and or not actually do not control t a third time just double click on it put on a drop shadow now we're gonna make it look even better by adding the colors of whatever we have right there boom and add a uh, slight distance uh So you're gonna have to like you want to tilt it to wherever you tilted it when doing the perspective so just like that you want colors on all the edges to make it look good so you check down here see if it kind of looks good if it looks fitting or not uh, yeah oh shit i accidentally canceled it but you get the idea uh, after that, you can add some more colors to it and, you know, you can just make it look really good. But um, in this case, I don't think it fits in the background or the thumbnail at all. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to basically I've already showed you what you can do with the different assets and stuff. So I'm going to disable this one. I'm actually just going to keep these two and. Uh, yeah, it kind of already looks good the way it is. Um gonna take the gun wherever the hell the gun is what the hell is the gun which one is this is the gun okay cool, cool. all right so i'll take the gun control t yeah yeah, yeah. get it boom maybe move it like a bit more off center so you can show the tag Alright, Bob. Um, yeah, so this already looks like really good, if you ask me. What we can do to add a bit more shine to it, we can actually go to the background layer right here. We can add another layer, get the brush tool, and what we can do is have the color white selected, and we can make the light a bit brighter on that side. To make it more you know make it more fitting with what the actual gun looks like so if you want that i would probably go with hard light soft light overlay i would probably go overlay on this part and what you can also do after you added that you can go to your gun where the hell is the gun right there you can add another layer on top of that one. Uh, make it into a clipping mask. So it only affects the gun. 
as I told you before. Create a clipping mask. Boom, maybe. Just add some just add some light to it, right? That's coming from that side. Just makes it look a bit better, in my opinion. Uh let's see maybe linear dodge add. You can lower the opacity to about 70. Boom. And there you have it. I think I'm finished with this thumbnail. Uh I think I've covered like almost everything you can do. And you know, play around with. This is only the basics. You know, you can add a ton of more assets. You can make you know if you kind of if you like this type of tutorial, you can just let me know. And I will do my best to make you know more of these tutorials and show you like what you can do more. And you know, there are there are a lot of uh, different kind of thumbnails that you can make. There are there are the ones there where you can see the um, what's it called uh, the stat bar ones, uh, which includes the gun, just the gun on the screen and black backgrounds and stuff like that. Uh, you have these types of backgrounds right here. You have all types of different thumbnails. Uh, I can show you a lot of them. Honestly, I don't mind. I just need to know if y'all interested in that or not. Um, so if you found this helpful, please consider leaving me a comment and a like and telling me what you felt about it. Um, now that I think about it, we are going to make this a bit bigger. So just like that kind of looks better. I think. Boom. There we have it. We can even make the gun a bit bigger. Take that. Take this. Group them up. Control T. Yeah, yeah, we get it. Just like that. Boom. Everything's done. So the last thing you need to think about is uh, that to export it, to actually be able to use it as a thumbnail, you need to go to export, export as, and you want your picture to be less than uh, two MBs. So if it's over two, you cannot use it. Uh, YouTube does not allow you to do it. So you can just try, you know, obviously PNG is the ideal way to go, but obviously it's super high. Sometimes it works, but you can try to make it a smaller file and see we're almost close to two, but it won't allow 2.1. That's not good. So we have to go with JPEG. I think JPEG is a bit worse than PNG. So you can try the highest one. That's 2.5. Uh, you won't have it as a thumbnail. It won't allow you. You could have it on six. That's 1.2. Honestly, it doesn't make a huge difference. Uh, I'm not going to lie. But um, yeah, that's how I make my thumbnails. And yeah, the last thing you need to do is just export it. And uh, give it a name. I already have one that I made before that I wasn't really happy with. But this is the second one. So yeah. Export it, save it. Also, do save it on your file. So, save as. And then, save to Creative Cloud. And boom. Have it right there. Saved. Uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, let me know if you want to see more thumbnail tutorials in the future. Or any other tut tutorials that has with this category, category to do with. I guess. Uh... I can make a ton more so yeah you just gotta let me know and uh, yeah don't forget to subscribe like the video and let me know about your opinions again <laughs> I would love to know what you think about it and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one peace